Good morning, guys. It is Wednesday. It is Wednesday, uh, August 21st, 2024. This is Bathroom Business. I got my coffee, clearly not enough yet, and I got the news. Uh, so I'm just going to be sharing two major stories. Really, I'm going to be sharing one major story. It's going to be short and sweet, but I just found a couple uh, little news stories I'm going to plug in before that. Uh, the major news story, of course, being about Utah, but uh, let's get to the minor points first. Uh, so uh, this is just an article I found very interesting. Uh, I'm going to let me make sure this is sharing because I always do that. Uh, so this is a story just from Yahoo, uh, uh, Yahoo Finance. Uh, I think it's actually originally from uh, the uh, Fortune magazine. Uh, but Ed Yardini is predicting that there's only going to be one rate cut uh, coming in September, and he thinks it's going to be one and done for the year. He makes a good argument. I agree with it. I, like I've said before, I don't think rate cuts are a good idea in this economy. I've talked about that multiple times, that the economy is simply doing too strong. This ridiculous idea that somehow cutting rates is going to lead to lower uh, prices for homes is ridiculous. Never in history has that happened. The second rates are going to be cut. All that's going to happen is that people will know that they can now increase the cost of their homes when they're selling by at least, you know, 20, 25,000, because now that is going to be made up uh, in interest for the buyer. So uh, I don't think it's going to have much effect, but he talks about everything I've talked about on this channel as well. Um, the fact that we're getting strong data, the fact that the job, the single jobs report doesn't change the fact that we've had progressively strong job numbers, the fact that retail is up, the fact that uh, the economy is going strong. Uh, and actually, on the to piggyback off of that, I'm going to share this uh, ar article right here as well, also from Yahoo Finance, uh, that uh, Target uh, cut prices on 5,000 products. Now it's back with big earnings beat. Uh, Target had record-breaking prices, uh, record-breaking quarter. So they had a fantastic quarter. Uh, sales were up, revenues were up. It was fantastic overall. Uh, now, I will also share a side note. Uh, this article made me laugh because this must be the stupidest article ever written. Target may have solved one of retail's biggest problems, theft. And do you know what the, uh, the solution that Target came up with? Well, if you scroll down here, you find out exactly what it is. Lockboxes, amazing. Go target. Uh, that's such a stupid article to say that you have solved the problem doing that. This is just pretty much San Francisco 24 seven. Now uh, I was out there. Uh, it's actually been almost two years ago since I was out there uh, and it was bad. Everything is under lock and key. Uh, so congratulations. We've solved the problem with locks. Uh, anyway, back to the point at hand. I think that the economy is doing very strongly. I think that uh, retail is up, sales is up. We've talked about this. The only thing that's really down was Home Depot and Lowe's, obviously being heavily tied to the housing sector, but even housing is doing quite fine. There's still plenty of uh, movement in the market. Uh, so that's that. So now let's get to the main story of the day. So uh, I'm going to share this tab, uh, even though this is a video, I'm not going to play it now. Uh, but I do recommend you guys go and see it. Uh, it is a longer video. It's about 24 minutes. So what happened is when I was at work yesterday, this came up as a, a live stream from Forbes uh, in regards to the fact that the Utah state government is suing uh, the federal government, particularly BLM, for control of federal lands. So this is actually a complicated story. So I'm going to give you a quick synopsis. In fact, if you don't have time to watch the 24-minute video, here is a different video that you could watch. Uh, again, all these links are in the description below. This video is only two minutes, 28 seconds. It summarizes things very well. It's from local ABC4 News, uh, and it will give you everything you need without all of the, the major details. But uh, back to the point at hand. Uh, so about 70% of Utah is uh, controlled by the federal government. So nearly 7% of land in Utah is controlled by federal government. In fact, that has irritated Utah politicians. That's not important. There's only one state with more federal control, and that's Nevada. And obviously, that is because of military uh, use. Uh, we don't have as heavy military use here in Utah, uh, so it actually is, is even more frustrating. Uh, now, the big question isn't about the full 70%. It's about half of that. So the real question is about 34% of Utah, which is called unappropriated lands. So I'm going to share this photo with you guys. Hopefully you're seeing that. Uh, so this photo shows all the land that's in dispute. Now, what is unappropriated land? Unappropriated land is land where um, it, it's not a national. So appropriated land is like national parks, uh, military bases, actual land in use. So none of that is up for dispute. Utah is not actually disputing any of that. That's the federal government's. That's fine. 
this is unappropriated land. So it's land that's just owned by the federal government. So about 34% of Utah that is in this lawsuit that nothing happens on and that nothing is allowed to happen on, including uh, forest management, including grazing, including any sort of entry or exit. So a lot of times these areas are just closed off entirely for the public. And uh, even if we wanted to do forest service in some of these areas that actually desperately need it, uh, it doesn't happen. Uh, this has been an issue for about 50 years in Utah because this is, has slowly expanded and encroached. Uh, obviously, the Bears Ears um, story from a number of years ago was one of the catalysts that I think precipitated this to move as heavily as it has. But uh, this is kind of a major issue. So uh, this is going straight to the Supreme Court. So Governor Cox, and I'm not his biggest fan, but uh, I think he's done flawlessly with this, uh, of taking this lawsuit directly to the Supreme Court, that the federal government cannot just seize lands and hold them indefinitely, because some of these land uses uh, permits have been in place for about 50 years. So they've just been sitting on this land doing absolutely nothing with it, uh, including forest management. Now, this is a major point here in Utah, because we are the second dry state after Nevada as well. And we are constantly having issues with forest fires. Now, we manage it much better than a place like California. I've actually advocated for the fact that we should be suing California for all of the air pollutants that we have here in Salt Lake. Uh, for those that um, live in Utah, you know that this is a constant issue, that despite the fact that we make gains with uh, air quality index every year, we have reduced emissions, we have had regulations in place. Uh, California has these massive forest fires because they can't manage their lands. It comes through and we're in smog for half the year. Earlier this year, it was pretty bad, uh, but there have been years where it is just a thick layer of smoke coming straight out of California because like a lot of things, California can't manage anything. Uh, I've advocated that we should be suing California directly in federal court for violation of air quality laws. Uh, and I think we should be doing that very aggressively uh, because they need to get their stuff in check. But that's a side note. This uh, lawsuit is directly addressing this. Uh, I don't know when it will be up for uh, hearing at the Supreme Court. Obviously, the Supreme Court might not even pick it up. But I think it's a fantastic idea that Cox is actually moving forward with this. If we could manage these lands better, I think we would see uh, better land use here in Utah. I think we would see better environmental regulations. I think it would be an improvement across the board. Uh, that's pretty much it. So that's the main headline story of the day. Um, once again, I do support this entirely. I'm not, like I said, a big, the biggest fan of Cox, but I think with this story, he is spot on. Uh, that's pretty much it. So I got to get to work. I hope you guys have a productive day and I'll see you tomorrow.